Hello and welcome to the CircuitPython Weekly for February 3rd, 2020. My name is Scott and I work for Adafruit on CircuitPython full-time. CircuitPython is an easy way to get started coding on hardware using the awesome Python programming language. Uh, if you want to know more about CircuitPython, you can go to circuitpython.org. Uh, if you do circuitpython.org slash downloads, you'll see all the different hardware devices that we run on. Uh, which is awesome. Uh, this is our community meeting. We run it once a week, uh, usually on Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on the Adafruit Discord server, which everyone is welcome to join at adafru.it slash discord. Go to that URL. It, it will bump you to the Discord URL, and then you'll be able to join our server. Uh, we're in the text chat basically all week, but we're only in the voice chat during this meeting. Um, this meeting is run in, uh, well, everyone's welcome to attend the meeting. Uh, I also, as a heads up for anybody new, uh, this meeting is recorded as well. So I take both a, a screen capture of the uh, CircuitPython text chat at, during the meeting and uh, an audio capture of everyone in the voice channel. So please be aware that that is happening. The recordings get posted onto YouTube and Diode Zone, uh, YouTube all the time at youtube.com slash Adafruit and Diode Zone uh, when I'm doing it, uh, not necessarily every time. Um, and along with that, we post a link to the notes as well, which uh, gives you a chance to read over what we talked about and potentially skip around. We'll take time codes during that so that you can skip around in the, in the meeting. It tends to run an hour to an hour and a half. Uh, we're having just a, a lot more people join, so it does take a little bit longer. So uh, let us know if you can't make the whole meeting. We'd be happy to let you do both hug reports and status updates uh, early on before you have to take off, um, or vice versa. Um, if you're unable unable to make the meeting, you can also uh, drop notes in the note stock. We post it to, uh, to the CircuitPython text channel beforehand as well. Um, as I alluded to, this meeting is in five parts. Uh, we first have community news, which is an overview of all the things that have hit the web uh, about CircuitPython. Phil usually does that. After community news, we have uh, state of CircuitPython, its libraries, and Blinka. And this is kind of an objective statistics overview of the health of the project and those large pieces of the project. Um, it's a way to ground us in, in like metrics that we care about um, and do that publicly. Uh, after that, we have Hug Reports, which is a chance for us to say a quick thank you to folks for the awesome stuff that they've been doing since you've had a, uh, a chance to do that previously. Uh, generally, because it's a weekly meeting, it kind of covers the last week. Uh, but, you know, we're happy to have Hug Reports for whatever you're doing, whatever's relevant, whatever you feel is worth a Hug Report. So uh, we do that as a round robin. So I will start and then we'll go through the list of folks in the voice chat alphabetically. Uh, we will also mix in anybody who is text only or wasn't able to me make the meeting. I'll read those off in alphabetical order as well. Um, if you are in the meeting, just let us know. Uh, if you're text only, put the notes in the notes doc and I will read those off for you. Uh, and if you are just wanting to listen and let us know you're lurking and we'll, we'll mark you in the notes doc as that and I'll, I'll just skip over you then. Um, so that's kind of like the round robin format. Um, we follow up hug reports with the status updates, which is also done in the round, round robin format. Um, and it's a chance for you to take a couple minutes and talk about what you've worked on kind of in the past week and kind of what you're looking forward to working on, where you plan on working on in the coming week. It's a great way to get in sync with everybody and, and potentially give tips or tricks to other folks if they're working on something similar to what you've done. Uh, that can be really helpful. So uh, lastly, we have a section called In the Weeds which is just a general discussion time. Um, it's meant to, it's put at the end because it could potentially be kind of like deep technical or, or deep topics in general. Um, so if you have something or a question you want to bring up, that sort of thing, do, uh, let, us, uh, let us know, uh, drop it in the, in the weeds section. And uh, yeah, uh, we can talk about things in the weeds and then we'll wrap up. Um, and I think that's everything. Um, so let's get going. Uh, I will take a time code and we'll kick it over to Phil for community news. All right, thank you, Scott. Mm -hmm. Okay, first up, um, hug report to everyone who works on this thing called open source, called CircuitPython, called Feather, called um, just getting things out in the world. The Freedom Wing adapter is out, Bill, 
uh, from AT Makers, and a group of people worked on this, turns a power wheelchair into an Xbox controller. Watch the video. I collected all of the news about this. This is just another um, side effect of doing something open and putting it out there. When we started Feather, we didn't expect um, it to be used for this. It wasn't even an idea. We didn't even know about it. And uh, here we are today, and it's also a CircuitPython powered project. Over the weekend, Bill and team, they had high schoolers making these for people. I think that's one of the neat things that Bill does is he has uh, a lot of the kids that are learning electronics or any of the STEM subjects also make some of the things and then see the impact it has. So um, great project. We'll have more about this later. I'm still collecting up all the links and news. If you see anything, um, get it our way so we can have a have it in one spot. So when folks ask, hey, what do you what do you all do? What's a good example? Um, this is one of them. The Clue was released, the alpha version. It's microbit shaped, circuit Python powered, and it's sensor packed. Um, I'm going to skip around because this is what I was talking um, to Jepler about in Slack, but then I had to go to a meeting. So um, I don't know if you saw this, but Jepler, this is the, the, the project I'm going to do tonight. So I'm getting these little parachutes from the army people that you get. They're like little toys. And uh, if the egg survives the parachute drop, then uh, it's a little happy egg. And then if it doesn't, it's the uh, broken egg. So this is one of the cool projects. I don't know if you ever did this when you were a kid. You'd have the egg drop, you put in a milk carton, there's eggs involved. But now you can do this with uh, Clue. And I'll have these little parachutes sometime today. So anyways, uh, so I'm skipping around. That was the coming soon project. Uh, there is a circuitpython.org video. Check it out. It under one minute shows what the circuitpython.org site. We have more updates ahead, but this is a good overview of all the stuff it does. The boards, the counters, the libraries, where you can get help, support, all that more. I've been collecting the Open Hardware Summit wearable badge update photos. So over the weekend, Michael, who's working on it, got the screen uh, from us. The board, I think it's brought up to the point where it can do uh, I squared C and it can display some things have all of the things in our newsletter that's going out. But if you want a preview, you can see it now. That'll be at the Open Hardware Summit in March. Um, coming up at PyCon, um, Maria is doing a talk about how CircuitPython can help your plants. You can learn how to build an indoor garden with microcontrollers and IoT. We also have a project coming out this week. So if you're interested in um, using CircuitPython for plants and stuff and IoT, we got you covered. If you're going to conferences, because speaking of conferences, and you wanted to check out a cool project, uh, Nina has this neat video series. I think it's a two-parter on Twitch, and it's a Pi Portal Expovert badge. So if um, your batteries are full, as in socially, and you can talk to people, your Pi Portal will say, yay, I'm, uh, talk to me. And if not, it'll also have indicators. So you can see this project that Nina's working on start to finish on Twitch. Then um, this started out as an article about how open source communities are moving off of Slack to Discord that someone wrote. And then I pointed to that because I've been talking to other open source communities about how we use Discord. And then I put together a list of the Python and electronic communities that are out there. So check it out. I might turn it into an awesome page, like awesome dash Python electronics. Um, but those are the ones that I currently tune into on a regular basis. And um, check out the original uh, post from the author that noticed, okay, here's here's how companies or open source efforts are moving from the more uh, from a business tool like Slack more towards something like Discord. And if you've been in our Discord community, which you are now, you'll probably be like, oh, okay, like I, I could see why there, there's there's pros and cons to each. Um, Discord having more moderation, more tools, and more things for larger communities where Slack is definitely like you're at work and it's more geared towards workplace stuff. Um, coming soon, we have the um, Feather Bluefruit Sense. Lady and I worked on it over the weekend. We had some demos that we posted up. This is the Silk. It's also in the circuitpython.org slash downloads. You can get a preview. This is what we think will be kind of a really good low cost, uh, all every sense you can jam in on a board and it's another NRF 52840. Um, so check that out. We have a couple cool demos. Um, the uh, draft of the newsletter is up. It'll go out tomorrow. Last week it went out a day-ish later because we don't know. There was no reason for it to go out later, but MailChimp uh, saw the blog post that we have as a newsletter 
the next day and it sent out just fine. So we're not sure. And last up, um, our server is leveled up. We were one little diamond away from or gem away from it losing its level three stuff. Um, but we had someone on our team uh, give it a boost. So we're back to normal. So uh, thanks for all the folks who boost this on their own. And then, of course, the team members that do this as well. And that's the community news. Awesome. Thank you, Phil. Bye-bye. All right, let's move on to the state of CircuitPython, the libraries, and Blinka. Um, this is a statistical, objective, hopefully objective view of the health of the project. Um, and it talk, we talk about um, kind of a number of metrics that we think are, are useful uh, for measuring that. So um, I'll cover overall in the core, and then we'll hand it off to Katni and Melissa for the other library and Blinka section. So... First off, overall, uh, for all of the projects that we track, um, we had 41 pull requests merged, which is awesome, uh, from 19 different authors, which is like particularly awesome, I think. Uh, that's probably one of the higher numbers we've had. Um, so just a quick shout outs to some names I don't recognize in this list. Uh, Gustav VR, um, 2BNDY5. I think he's been on there a while ago, but is now here on here again. Uh, Cogliano is here occasionally. Uh, Neo X Harsh. Uh, Richard A1. Mark Patterson 27. Hybotics. Uh, thank you, all new folks that I see you there. Uh, thanks to everyone who is an author of a PR this week. <coughs> oh. And also thank you to the 10 reviewers we had. Uh, this is also a higher number than we normally have. So thanks to those folks uh, for, for that. Uh, and then on the issue side, we had 10 closed issues by five people and eight opened by six people. Uh, so we are net down two, which is awesome. Um, and we are getting more people involved in that as well. Uh, overall, uh, I think we'd say we're very close to getting to release candidate phase for 5.0. Um, if you have any features or things uh, or bugs that you think are super urgent, uh, please let Dan or I or Jeff know um, so that we can keep track of that. <laughs> um, otherwise, uh, expect to see 5.0 release candidate really soon now. Uh, we have uh, just a couple things that we want to get out before we go to the release candidate. So we'll probably have one final beta today, uh, but then we'll probably do release candidate. And uh, that should be really exciting. We'll get everybody on 5.0, which will be really good. Um, the library stuff is going really well, and Blake is going really well, as far as I know, also. Uh, and I will kick it over to uh, Katni and Melissa, as I said, just in a bit. Uh, but first, let's talk a little bit more detail about the core. Uh, this is like the C Python, or the, the C-based uh, core of CircuitPython. Uh, in that regard, we had 12 pull requests merged, which is pretty good for us as well, uh, from six different authors. Uh, and six different reviewers. So thank you to all of those authors and all of those reviewers. Um, I think we hit a low point in terms of pull requests earlier this week where we only had four pending, which is awesome. Um, as of this uh, stat stump, we have seven open pull requests where uh, four of the seven are have been opened less than a week. So that's been cool. And uh, issue-wise, we had four closed issues by one person and five open by three people. So we're net up one for a total of 251 open issues. Uh, this is not surprising. Uh, we just have a lot of stuff we want to do. Uh, we have eight active milestones. Uh, everything is assigned a milestone, which is great. And uh, I, we usually have seven active milestones, but I think we added a support milestone, which is handy as well. Uh, no download stats today because I think we broke GitHub. <laughs> uh, I think we have too many release artifacts now. So uh, we may have to take a look at that. But uh, yeah, so no no download stats today. But uh, let's kick it over to Katni for libraries. Thanks, Scott. Mm -hmm. All right. So this information covers all of the libraries. Um, so anything Adafruit underscore circuit Python underscore library name is covered here. Um, so overall, we had 29 pull requests merged by 16 different authors. Uh, most of the names that Scott pointed out, um, or all the names that Scott pointed out earlier are on my library list. 
Uh, I will name them again, Gusto VR, uh, Foamy Guy, 2BNDY5, Cogliano, NeoX Harsh, uh, Mark Patterson 27, and Richard A1, and Hybotics are all names I don't see very often and or don't recognize. Um, thank you very much for either coming back or uh, for your first contribution. Um, we had nine reviewers. So we have decided to change things up a little bit in terms of what we look at in statistically uh, for the libraries. And instead of having a list of the currently open pull requests, because that information is very easily available on circuitpython.org, um, what we're going to start including is a list of merged pull requests. And the key thing about this is that it also includes the number of days that it was open. So we can see both how many old ones we're getting to, but also we see on the list that despite the fact that we have currently our oldest open pull request is 366 days, we also have something like, you know, 15 that we closed in either zero or one days. Um, so we wanted to have a, a, a more positive view of what we're doing. And so that's what we did, we changed it up. So I don't have a number, which I think I actually am going to put in and file an issue and get that added. I don't have a number of pull requests that we merged without counting them individually, which I'm not going to do. But we had uh, quite a few pull requests merged over the last week. Um, and the oldest one was 185 days. And um, oh, does it say 29? Oh, right. <laughs> I read it off in the beginning. So we had 29 pull requests merged. Um, the oldest one being 185 days and the um, the most recent one being zero. Uh, it shows one days even if it's zero days um, was what I was told. Mm -hmm. In terms of issues, we had six issues closed by five people and three open by three people. So we are net down three for a total of 139 open issues. Um, and total, we have 12 open pull requests, which is really low for us. Um, this is a really big deal. It's been hovering around 30 or 40 for the past nine months to a year. And we are finally putting a lot of effort into getting these tested and merged. And um, I want to give a early hug report to Foamy Guy, who has recently jumped into testing um, a lot of PRs and uh, putting in fixes when necessary and, and persevered through dealing with GitHub and linting and Sphinx and all that fun stuff um, to get a lot of stuff that has been sitting around for a long time pulled in. So that is a really huge deal. And if you want to see a list of those open pull requests and those open issues, please visit circuitpython.org slash contributing. Uh, all that information is available there. And if you're interested in contributing, uh, it's a great place to start. Reviewing is a good way to start. Um, as well as checking out the issues for good first issues. Um, and there's also library infrastructure issues, which sometimes contain simple things like renaming files and that sort of thing. Um, and so uh, if you want help with learning how to use Git and GitHub, we have a guide for that, and we are happy to help you as well. So library updates in the last seven days. We had one new library, the DPS 310, and then a number of updated libraries as well, which I will not read all of them off. And that is where we are with the libraries. Awesome, thank you, Katni. All right, let's go on to Blinka info from Melissa. Thank you, Scott. Uh, so Blinka info covers uh, Blinka, which is our CircuitPython compatibility layer for Raspberry Pi and other single board computers. Uh, this week we had one merged pull request uh, by one author, one reviewer, and zero. There are zero open pull requests right now. Uh, there was one closed issue by one person and four open by four people. There are currently thirty-two open issues on Blinka, and there were nineteen hundred and sixty-six Pi PI downloads in the last week, and we are currently supporting thirty-eight boards. And that's it, and I'll hand it back to you, Scott. Awesome. Thank you, Melissa. All right, let's yeah. keep going. Uh, next up, we have Hug Reports. Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thank you. We've had a, a few previews already, which is awesome. 
Uh, Hug Reports is a chance for us to say thank you, uh, where I will start and then go down the list in alphabetical order based on those in the voice chat and the notes. Um, so generally, uh, follow along in the notes talk, I would say, uh, if you want to make sure that uh, whether somebody will be read off before you or not. The, the notes doc is the canonical place to look. Um, so like I said, uh, just take a couple minutes to say thank you to the folks that have been doing awesome work and uh you know it's it's really meant to take some time to think about the, the awesome things that are going on and share those with others to to also share what you value so um cool okay let's uh i, I will start as an example and then we'll go down the list so let me take a time code so first off, uh, thanks to Brent, Justin, and Lady Ada for helping me get going with Adafruit IO. Um, I'm very excited to be using it. It's kind of funny, like L Lady Ada couldn't quite believe that I hadn't used it before, but uh, there's so much going on that it that it uh, definitely hadn't hadn't crossed my radar yet. So been doing that. It's really exciting, and I'll tell you a bit about what I'm doing later. Uh, but thanks in advance or or in retrospect for those folks. Um, I was working on the tiny logic analyzer stuff over the weekend and Abraxa on the SIGGROC IRC was super helpful. So thanks to them. And also thanks to Jeff Epler for uh, the pixel buff review for me, but also in general, just uh, jumping in and, and being uh, doing more reviews. Really, uh, as we've said before, reviews are a great way to contribute because uh, it's kind of the the thing that we have the fewest people to do. So um, really happy to see people helping out with re reviews. So uh, thanks, Jeff, for that. And uh, let's go to TG, TG Techie. Hello. Hello. Uh, just a community hug for creating an awesome product that is continually easier and easier to use. Awesome. That's the right direction. <laughs> okay uh just a recap um in the earlier community section news adafruit had a hug report to everyone for making open source and allowing folks to get access to that um next up we have uh brent who is text only um and not in the call so i will read those off Brent says, uh, hug report to Lady Ada for the ESP32 Spy Socket and Network Manager, and uh, hug report to Sherry N for continued work on something. <laughs> for being awesome, I'm sure. Uh, okay, Carter is looking, so C. Grover is next in text only. So I'll read that off as well. C. Grover says, uh, thank you to the CircuitPython community for unfailing support and encouragement. Thanks to Ann B for her insightful advice and help with the learning guide publishing process. Thanks to Maker Melissa for her expert display I.O. tutorial. It was the tipping point for my understanding of display I.O. And uh, thank Hug Report to the author Donald Norris for the understandable object-oriented examples throughout his book, Python for micro Microcontrollers. Awesome. Thanks to Grover. Charles is lurking. So let's go to Code and Solder. Hello. Hello. A uh, group hug for everyone for making this community welcoming and inclusive. A uh, special thanks to Lady Ed and Brent for ESP32 SPI and mini MQTT library that are really, really helpful and great documentation helped me get started. Uh, thanks to Dan, Cater, Airfect, uh, David, Jepler, Desipu. Uh, you guys are really helpful. Whenever I have some issues, I got run into something which I couldn't figure and Google couldn't help. I just posted it to the group and you guys have been really helpful. So thanks a lot. Awesome. Thank you. All right. Next up is Dan. Hello. Okay. So I have some sort of like longer term, not just the past week, a hug report. So Jeff Epler has been working on all kinds of audio things and DMA for weeks now and has persevered and I love it. it's great continuing to work on that it's just it's it can be a slog and there are a lot of interrelated issues so thank you for that and thanks to Katni who has been 
revising the circuit playground library. Um, and there were always a lot of loose ends to type about that, about like updating the frozen libraries and so forth. So she's kept track of all that and that's really great. And then thanks to Lady Ada for the clue board, which I now have on my desk. And except for the fact that I have to wear my magnifying glasses to read the text, it's a really wonderful, interesting board. Okay. Awesome, thanks, Dan. Okay, next up is David. So I would like to give a special hug for everybody who's been helping for the last few months in making that presentation, answering all of my questions, understanding better Circuit Python and how it works within the community. And this week's special is for Katni, uh, I guess for the documentation and support, Melissa for the display I.O. answers, and Dan for the BLE answers. And also John Park, because I really love those uh, YouTube video and the uh, guide that sometimes we have to wait a bit for the guide, but it's always great. Awesome, thanks David. All right, let's go to the ship. I can't hear you. I see you unmuted, but I can't hear you. Oh, there. Sounds like it's the wrong mic. I can read it off here. <laughs> no problem. Okay, uh, this shipu says a uh, hug report to Damien George. Thorsten von Ecken and Christian Walter for working on getting dynamically loadable native modules to work in MicroPython. For those of you who want to follow along, the link to that is github.com slash micropython slash micropython slash pull slash 5463. And uh, also a hug report to Bjorn Sch uh, Schlieberg for a new game for Pew Pew. Uh, it's github.com slash pew pew game dash game slash game dash lights out. Um, Yep, and I think somebody will drop a link in for you shortly. Um, thanks to Shipu. Let's go to Drew. Sorry, it took, took me a long time to get to a meeting. At, um, <laughs> no worries. Thanks to uh, Phil for helping us um, uh, get LCDs quickly, test out the Open Harbor Summit uh, wrist badge. Um, and thanks to uh, Alex, Camilo, and Michael Welling, who have been uh, working on getting the board to come up and the sensor. Awesome. Thanks, Drew. Okay, Duester's lurking. Uh, so let's go to Foamy Guy. All right. Um, so I had this week, uh, Dan, uh, Dan H made, uh, e well, either made or had, I guess, a firmware for the CPX with display IO. Uh, I was playing with that a little bit earlier this week. I noticed an issue that wasn't letting me use the gamepad. Um, he got that straightened away for me so I could keep going. Um, Carter, uh, helped troubleshooting, uh, on a magnometer sensor, uh, Lady Ada, uh, also similarly, I was working with a compass example um, and having trouble figuring out exactly how that was supposed to relate to the real, real world. Um, and she got me uh, pointed in the right direction, quite literally. Uh, and then uh, Marius450 shared some super cool uh, examples with the gizmo. Again, uh, the Etch-a-Sketch and the Maze one. I saw that Etch-a-Sketch one a few days ago, and I still got that tab open to go back and play with it. And then put up another cool one today, the uh, the Maze. So looking forward to checking that out. Awesome. Thanks, Foamy Guy. All right. Next up is Geek Guy, who is text only. So I will read that off once it's posted. I believe that's the case. Uh, I'll skip just a bit ahead while Geek Guy does that and uh, read off Higher Effect, who's out sick. Uh, Higher Effect says, uh, hug reports to myself, Tanute, for reviewing the Meowbit PR. Thanks to Dishipu for providing a fun test game for the Meowbit, and a group hug to all. All right. And I will, we'll circle back to Geek Guy, and let's go to Jeff Epler. Hi. Well, Scott, I wanted to uh, thank you for being a sounding board last week with those display I.O. 
questions uh, where I was a little bit grumpy about the memory usage, <laughs> and you got me back on track. And I think longer term we'll we'll be able to come up with something. But uh, mm -hmm. yeah, so thank you for that, uh, and thanks to Dylan. I found that there were some broken links that affected doc building for a number of the modules uh, in the libraries. And this weekend, he just fixed all, it was like 19 of them. Uh, so really appreciate that. Thanks to David for representing CircuitPython at FOSDEM. I think, you know, we can have as much presence as we want on the internet, but you get in front of different people when you get them in person who wouldn't have searched for CircuitPython or wouldn't have seen it on the Adafruit blog, but they're like, oh, this sounds interesting. I'm gonna sit in on the session. So I'm sure you reach somebody and thanks for representing us. Uh, thanks to Pedro. One of my 3D printing designs was linked on 3D Thursday on the Adafruit blog. Um, and then just group hug to everybody because I haven't given a group hug in a while. And I don't know why not. I shouldn't be mean. <laughs> awesome. Thanks, Jeff. All right. Uh, Jerry just no dropped a note in. He's out today, but says uh, hug or group hug to everybody. So thanks uh, from J to Jerry for that. And let's go to Katni. All right, so I want to give a hug report to Maker Melissa for Display I.O. help. Um, I needed to do something that was fairly simple, and we have a lot of complicated examples, but not so many very simple examples. And um, the way I had it set up, uh, everything was updating in the loop, which meant it just filled up and blew up um, every time. And, uh, she really quickly figured out what the problem was and got me going, um, with everything, uh, getting that figured out. So now my example works. Um, I want to give a hug report to Jeff for quickly putting together a PR to resolve an issue that I pointed out and for persevering through trying to get it to build. Um, it was mostly a feature request and, um, I realized, like, I, I dug through libraries to figure out where it was that I could fix it and then found it was actually part of the core and immediately had to bail um, in terms of me not being able to um, to fix that issue myself. So that was uh, super nice to see that happen. Um, to Jeff, uh, Lamore, and Carter for reviewing my PRs over the weekend. Uh, I tossed those up, figuring um, they would not be gotten to until Monday, and they were either approved or merged pretty quickly uh, over the weekend, which was handy. Um, uh, I'll reiterate my hug report to Foamy Guy for picking up tons of library PRs and issues, testing, reviewing, and submitting fixes. Thank you very much for that. Um, one of the things we really want to do this year is push to keep up with the library PRs um, and keep up with, you know, new contributors and so on and so forth. And, um, that daunting task is seriously, um, mitigated right now because of foamy guys work. So thank you very much for that. Um, hug report to Marius450 for creating a super neat maze game demo on, uh, Gizmo, uh, with, uh, circuit Python. That was very cool. Um, and to Crayola for helping to bring my imagined user experience to life. Um, I'm writing a library for Clue and had a very lengthy, very repetitive code example that I needed to figure out a way to do it without um, repeating everything 10 times. Um, and I, I don't quite have a grasp on how to easily do that and um, he helped out with that and got it to where um, I took probably 100 lines of code and got it down to 24 um, using a library. So that was really excellent. And I'm really happy with how it turned out and really happy with um, what the user experience will be in the end. Um, so thank you very much for that. And those are my hug reports. Awesome. Thanks, Katni. OK. King or North is text only, so I'll read that off. King or North says, general group hug for all the great people doing great work. And after that, we have Maker Melissa. Hello. So I just wanted to give a hug report to SummerSoft for updating the Blink account, uh, to Dan H for the quick clue board fix, and a group hug. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. 
Okay, next up is Summersoft, who's uh, missing the meeting due to a day job conflict. Um, Summersoft says, uh, Hug reports Jeff Epler for making quick work of getting my getting MPY cross builds into the CI slash CD, and also thank or and also group hug to everyone. All right, and that's it for Hug reports. Uh, thank you to everybody who participated. Uh, it's great to see. You know, we all have a different perspective on the community, and it's great to see all of the cool things coming from that are happening that are visible from those perspectives. So thank you to everyone for that. Uh, next up, we have status updates. Status updates is a chance for us to talk a bit about what we're working on and uh, like what we did in last week and what we're doing in the coming week. It's a great way to just stay on the same page and give tips or tricks to folks who are doing things similar to what you've done. Um, so I will start, uh, round robin rules apply. So if you are I don't think anybody's joined since we started, but just make sure that in the note stock, uh, the, the note about whether you're text only or lurking matches what you expect, uh, and that'd be super handy. And with that, uh, I'm going to start. I was bad about not getting my notes in. So <laughs> thanks. Thanks to Katni, I think who's taking notes. Um, I'm primarily focused on what I'm calling broadcast net, which is, using Beely advertisements to do very simple uh, but effective IoT. So uh, just take a device and broadcast like a temperature from a temperature sensor, for example. So uh, hoping to make it really easy to gather data from a number of sensors near you uh, within uh, Beely broadcast range and get those put on Adafruit IO. Uh, so expect to see that. It's, I'm pretty excited. I've, I've had this happening in my house before. But it's always kind of been a pain, so I'm, I'm excited to get it going easily. Um, that's one of my focuses. I worked a little bit over the weekend on the Tiny Logic Friend, which is a uh, just a firmware for SAMD51 boards that makes it a SIGROC compatible uh, logic analyzer, which is should be super easy. Um, I'm speaking at PyCascades this weekend, so if you're going to PyCascades in Portland, uh, let me know, and I'd love to meet up with you. Um, but I've got uh, some stuff to finish up on that presentation. I'm last, so I have time when I'm there to work on it, but I'd rather not do that. Uh, so I've got a little bit of planning with that and uh, some errands to run during the week before I, before I spend all weekend doing that conference stuff. Uh, I will be back on Sunday evening, so I, I will be back on Monday as scheduled. So it'll only be Friday that I'm kind of like gone. Um, uh, yeah, I think that's mainly it, doing uh, Beely IoT and sensing stuff um, to go with Clue and the Feather Sense that's coming at some point in the future as well. So that's it for me. Uh, let's go to TG Techie. Hi, uh, that sounds like a lot of fun things. It um, is fun. <laughs> so over the past month-ish, I've been uh, putting together designs for Watch. I have a 3D printed case. Just ordered a motherboard, and of course, it only runs Circuit Python. Um, I also tried using DisplayYo for a graphics UI kind of thing, and wasn't quite fitting what I wanted. So I did make another <laughs> surprise, another GUI, um, <laughs> which I'll post some video of. It's much snappier this time, and I'll post some example code um, because it's a lot shorter as well. Nice. And yeah. Awesome. Thank you. Thanks, TG Techie, for pushing the UI boundaries. <laughs> My pleasure. <laughs> awesome. All right. Let's see. Scrolling up. Anic Data and Ann are lurking. Uh, so Brent Root is text only. So let me take a time code and read that off. Um, Brent says, uh, worked on PyPortal Titano planter guide with Noam Pedro. Should be live by Wednesday. And uh, working on the CircuitPython W5K, a pure Python Ethernet module implementation. Currently working with a W5500 Ethernet Featherwing, but has boilerplated code for adding different W5K family chips. Uh, Ethernet Manager will be a high-level wrapper for this module. And after this, I'll be modifying the requests and mini MQTT to dynamically select which network manager you've passed in. And that sounds awesome. I'm super excited to have my... Uh, IoT bridge over Ethernet rather than Wi-Fi. So thank you to Brent. Uh, next up, we have C. Grover, who is also text only. 
Seagrover says, I published the Pygamer Thermal Camera Learning Guide, uh, made significant progress on the Mystery Project, applying some newly minted object-oriented coding skills. I've achieved the level of awkward overconfidence. <laughs> Uh, two purple PCBs were completed, foiling their escape plans. Received a new shipment of six more boards, uh, two designs, late last week. We'll build those designs this week. And in the studio, just one track left to overdub and master, getting close. So thank you to C. Grover for that. Uh, Charles is lurking, so let's go to Code and Slaughter. Okay, so last week, uh, in fact, uh, this weekend, we had celebrated uh, the Processing Day here in New Delhi, India. And Processing is one of the programming language which get me started into the maker community. So yes, uh, attended by people from sciences, arts, and technology background. Uh, I made a small demo there using my Pi Batch and ESP32 Feather airlift wing. Uh, so the idea was to uh, because people always get fascinated by seeing the Pi badge and they wanted to, you know, try it from themselves. So idea was to, they can send their name over the MQTT uh, using Adafruit IO, and they can also change the NeoPixel on the Pi badge. And uh, as uh, Phil shared before, uh, Nina is also working on something similar where she can control the LEDs to display the social battery status. So if LEDs are red, you are not available for uh socializing if you're green then you are ready to communicate so something like that and here's the tweet chain of the progress of uh, how i made it i tested different modules uh step by step and i also published uh, a blog if you want to make your own and also a small video and i really love the flat lay video uh, thumbnail so do check that out mm -hmm. Uh, also, I helped uh, a couple of uh, students who attended the Circuit Python Day in New Delhi and helped them getting started with their project. Uh, one of the projects which came out really neat uh, this week was uh, a USB rubber ducky using the Circuit Playground board, which is also going to come to the newsletter, and it's really neat. Uh, one update I got from the Python US is uh, I actually proposed the Python on hardware poster which is selected and i'm looking forward to attend and see some of the faces behind the voices on this channel and mm -hmm. really excited for this so subject to logistic and if everything works out i'm gonna see you there so uh that was uh, the last week and uh this is the poster presentation from pycon india and we are planning to do something similar for pycon us so if you have any ideas feel free to connect and would really appreciate uh, coming week, I have some plans of uh, using uh, rotary encoders and doing some MIDI thing. And so far, I managed to interface four rotary encoders with the M0 chip. So I'm going to go uh, do that. And yes, that's all. Awesome. Thank you, Code and Solder. All right. Let's do Dan. OK. So um, in the past week, um, you were trying some uh, BLE code, the heart rate monitor uh, project that uh, John Park did, and that pointed out some bugs when BLE was acting as a central, so I fixed those. And we're also in anticipation of some upcoming uh, projects that involve more than one sensor. Um, uh, we increased the number of BLE connections possible at once uh, from two to five, so we'd be able to talk to multiple sensors or other devices at once. And we're going to test that soon. Um, uh, there's a bunch of other various bugs that I was fixing in preparation for the um, 5.0 release. And the, I'm continuing to do that. Uh, the beta 5 uh, release notes are pretty much done. And so after a couple more PRs today, we'll probably release beta 5 this afternoon or this evening or at, at most tomorrow, but probably tonight or earlier. And the next thing I'm working on is that um, in the NRF52840, there are several SPI peripherals, but only one of them works at 32 megahertz and it has bugs in it, it has hardware bugs. So we've avoided using it, but it would really be nice to use it uh, for the display on, say, the clue to make that display run faster. So there are workarounds for the bug, but they require some extra coding. So I'm going to work on that um, for 5.0. That's what I'm, that's my major uh, thing to do for the next 
uh, a few days. Okay. Awesome. Thanks, Dan. All right, Dave is lurking, so let's go to David. So um, last week I did finish all the demo I had in mind, which is a pity because I did not show any of those. And I did publish the slide. Hopefully I had those because that's what I did present. Then I made my presentation. Uh, if you want, we can talk about that a week. Then distributed 35 of those blinker stickers. So I've got a few left. Um, what I'm do with them. Then uh, visiting for the MicroPython stand and watching some other IoT presentation that were, um, well, one was MicroPython and augmented reality and one was one guy was using Tinigo on a lot of Adafruit hardware. Very impressive. I don't know when the video will be available. Um, this week I'm going to rest a little bit and then I've got a strange project because there was a guy from Red Cross that was doing geolocalization based on BLE um, beacon. And at work, there are 150 devices that act as it. And I know where they are, so I was wondering if I could use that. Hmm. And finally, I've got a book uh, with 780 and page in French about MicroPython and PyBoard. Um, yeah, I don't have a PyBoard, at least not the old one. But I'm going to browse through that book. Um, it's from the distributor of um, Adafruit stuff and MicroPython stuff in Belgium. Hmm. And he's a French guy and does a lot of translation from Adafruit documentation, I guess, hmm. with the authorization. I so that's it. Awesome. Thank you, David. All right, let's go to the ship. Okay, can you hear me now? Yes. Yes, fixed. Nice. Okay, so uh, I've been last week. I've been trying. To, well, actually, since uh, since the one point twelve release of MicroPython, I was trying to figure out how to compile a MPY uh, module uh, that contains native C compiled code. Uh, because if I could do that, then uh, it will be much easier for people to use my game library of MicroPython. They want me to uh, compile custom firmware for, for that. Uh, however, this is much more complicated than I expected. So it's, it's taking uh, much more work. And also help from, from all the people I mentioned in the uh, hack reports. And uh, a week ago on the weekend, I was uh, in Brno at the Conf CZ, which is uh, all similar to force them it's always either week after or week before force them and uh, i had a table there i was showing a bunch of circuit python things including the qqm4 and uh, actually one one of the people because uh, a lot of uh, red hat people are there obviously because there is a red hat office in there and one of the people who was interested in in the circuit python who got interested in it is a QA, QAMO uh, dev developer. So uh, it might be pos it's possible that uh, we might be uh, starting to work on, on running uh, like uh, SAMD emulator in QAMO, uh, emulating the whole trip. So that, that should make testing much easier. We will see about that. Nice. That, that's it. Awesome. Thank you, Deshapu. Okay. Next up, we have Foamy Guy. All right. So for um, the previous week, uh, I had testing on some time of flight sensors. So there was a old pull request that added support for using multiple sensors on the same I2C bus. We got that tested. Um, the CPX and Gizmo thermometer. Um, worked on that this week. The There was another issue, uh, or pull request one of the two, it's on the debouncer library. So that's about a, a long-term issue after a few days of running. Um, it runs into some issues due to the time dot monotonic uh, taking a little bit longer. So I've got that test uh, running back at home, hoping to get some results here in a few days. Although uh, I will say it's proven to be a little tough to get them to keep running. I keep 
accidentally resetting it with, um, with static or my computer decided to write a file to it at one point and they reset. So uh, it might take a few extra days, but I got that uh, going. Um, and then the other two for last week were uh, still playing around with musical tones. Um, so I generated some WAV files using different waveforms, uh, created all of that with Python code. So that was kind of fun. And then the last one uh, was working on a temperature issue on the MPU 6050 breakout. There was uh, an old issue. Uh, somebody had noticed that it was calculating the temperature incorrectly a little bit. Um, and then upcoming for the next week, uh, I've got still uh, trying to finish up the, the compass and the inclinometer examples. Uh, I need to polish up the thermometer example. Um, I need to work a little bit more on the tone player. So I've got a good proof of concept, uh, but it needs to be kind of really uh, polished up and, and turned into a good example. Continue the debouncer testing. And then uh, the last one is I'm going to play with this little timer circuit. So um, I'm not sure how long these have been around. I actually just learned about them a few weeks back um, and I was excited to play with them. And I found myself at the store this weekend. So I picked one up, the, the TPL 5110. So uh, I'm going to play with that at some point this week. Um, and that's all I got. Awesome. Thanks, Foamy Guy. All right. Next up, we have Geek Guy, who's text only and has a couple things. Um, first, uh, Geek Guy asks Is there a preferred tool for editing font files like font5x8.bin? And I would say generally, there's only one library that uses five by eight, uh, font5x8.bin. Um, all of the display IO oriented stuff now uses. Uh, BDF files, which is kind of like an old standard for binary font files, and FontForge will use that. Uh, I don't know what font 5 by 8 bin uses, though, so I can't help you with that. Um, maybe somebody here knows and just drop a comment in the text chat. Um, Geekai also says, I've been building up a script for testing many sensors where any can be turned on or off easily. This includes sensors that need to go through an I2C multiplexer. Uh, Again, if you're interested, uh, let us know. Drop a comment, uh, mention Geek Guy, and let them know that you're interested in a big matrix of sensors for testing as well. Uh, thank you, Geek Guy, for that. Uh, Higher Effect is out sick, so I'll read that off. He says, last week wrapped up the Meowbit board support page or package. Uh, wrote a quick demo for the Meowbit using Dishipu snake code. Uh, added UF2 boot options to the STM32 port make file, and added the STM32F407 discovery, though it's having USB issues. Uh, this week, figure out what's wrong with the F407 discovery USB. Uh, added temperature sensor and microsecond support to the STM32 port, uh, final 5.0 issue. Uh, finished the Esprino ports and modified the STM32F4 UF bootloader to behave the same as atmel slash NRF on the startup as well. All right. Okay, that's from Higher Effect. Let's go to Jeff. Hi, everybody. Last week, I worked on Jet Player bugs. I found a few interesting ones during my own testing. Uh, I learned how to create release assets from GitHub Actions, and so now Jet Player has a tagged release with a release artifact on it. I investigated some reported audio bugs. Uh, more about that a little below. I investigated some more string compression improvements. I think maybe 400 to 600 bytes we can get back. Uh, I reviewed that pixel buff PR and I was really excited about it because uh, I have a demo that kind of does a, a wave using that um, rainbow pattern and it doubled the refresh rate. So that was awesome work and I should have given a hug report um, <laughs> about that, but here it is. Uh, and I filed a PR about displayio.palette to accept color tuples, uh, which I will fold into my this week. While Scott was talking about that, I remembered, oh yeah, there's pixel buff, and why don't we share the code to accept all these different formats between those two uh, modules? So maybe I will look into that given spare time, but who has spare time? Well, that sounds, um, <laughs> that sounds worth it if we're having problems fitting everything. Yeah, um, the, I mean, we are, so I will, I will try to find time to look into that. Uh, Lamore asked me to spend a couple of days uh, looking into how to help get this ULAB NumPy-like module for MicroPython uh, so that it can come into CircuitPython. So I need to contact somebody called Gatherer A about it, who has been working on that independently. Uh, at some point 
uh, requested changes are going to come in for JetPlayer, and then that will go back to being my top priority. I have a PR that I need to finish for this uh, bug we isolated last week with looping wave files that are not a multiple of the size of the buffer that wave file reading likes to use. The DMA can get confused because it doesn't have enough time to uh, do stuff. And so we're just going to drop the last part that uh, isn't a multiple. And uh, I did some work today to investigate audio pops on NRF. I found that it's very dependent on how I wire my amplifier. If I wire it one way, there's hardly any pop at all. And if I wire it another, there are these loud, awful pops. Um, but that way is the way that the cricket is wired. So uh, that means we need to fix it. And I know the problem is that we didn't implement this ramp up and down. Um, and so just need to do that. And my ongoing fun projects are, I'm going to be in Texas from the 12th to the 14th. So you see less of me around, and I'll miss one weekly meeting. But if you're in Austin, Dallas, or parts in between, send me a DM, and maybe we can get together and have a coffee or something. Awesome. Thanks, Jeff. All right, let's go to Katni. All right. So last week, I published the guide, the product guide for the MLX90640 uh, thermal camera which uh, is pretty neat. And there's a, um, the CircuitPython page has a general simple test. And then we also included an example from uh, David Gloud uh, of an actual using a, using a board with a display to make an actual thermal camera. Um, and we included an Arduino one as well. So it covers uh, both using ASCII to display um, thermal data, and then also actually displaying it in color um, for both programming languages, uh, regardless of um, regardless of what uh, language you want to use. So that was that was cool. Um, I helped spin up uh, Foamy Guy to get him ready to continue testing library PRs. Um, got him set up with hardware and uh, just been helping him with Sphinx and linting and etc issues um thank you again for everything you've been doing um i started the dps 310 guide and got it as far as i could without the circuit python library uh and then was planning on finishing that up but brian who is writing the circuit python library um offered to take over it and finish the last little bits that required the lib so that's been handed off i went through all the library prs again um but a lot of that actually has been uh, taken off my plate since someone else is going through and doing a lot of the reviewing. Um, so I'm still keeping an eye on that, but uh, I'm less concerned about trying to stay on top of everything right now since we actually have some activity on a, quite a number of them. Um, I started going through guide feedback, which there's a link in every guide page where you can provide feedback and that feedback is then aggregated for us. And so I've been going through that and completing uh, simple issues uh, and started getting into some of the more complicated issues because um, there's some things where it's, it's going to require like a, a rewrite of part of a guide page and so on so, uh, because the example changes or something like that. So that, those I've been holding off on um, until I actually have some time. Started the Clue product guide, got that as far as I could without the board. Uh, then received the Clue board, then started the Clue library, which is a high-level wrapper library that includes all the sensors and buttons, et cetera, and including the ability to easily display sensor data using display I.O. Um, when I was told to write this library, I was told that the eventual plan was to be able to do a simple 10 sensor data display. Um, so I thought to myself, OK, I, I guess I'll try and include a way to actually do that with Display I.O. Um, in the library, similar to vaguely similar to how Pi Badger works, where you can display a, um, you know, a badge on your on your Pi Badge uh, super easily without a lot of crazy code. Um, so that actually got finished. Uh, it, it, I like how the code looks. I like how the user experience will be. And um, the demo 
uh, works great. So there's some customizations to be done. Um, you don't have to display all of the data if you don't want to. You can display as much or as little as you want. And um, the, the colors are settable, but there's also just default colors so that at least um, at least the if you don't want to set colors for everything, you don't have to. Um, so this week, um, this is actually out of order because the first thing I need to do is get the Clue library to a PR state. Um, I got touch added before the meeting, so that's off of an issue. I need to finish up any other code changes that are necessary, then cookie cutter it, document it, and PR it. Uh, once that's PR'd so that that can start getting tested, I'll go back and finish the product guide, which the last thing to do is um, add the CircuitPython install screenshots, which is the part that I couldn't do without the board. I need to post a blog about the guide I published last week, the MLX 90640. And um, I need to reply to a user on Discord who wrote a CircuitPython library um, and wanted to know whether anybody would be interested to let them know that there are options with the bundle and um, or there's now a list of works in progress on the community bundle as well for people to post uh, libraries that they're writing, but they don't think are ready for prime time and or they don't want to put in the extra steps to get it added to the community bundle. Um, so those are options. Um, and so I want to get back to them and let them know what it is that they can do to get their driver out there into the world. And um, that is where, oh, and then actually the next thing I'm going to be doing, I just forgot to add this because this got added right before the meeting, is there is a sensor lab um, example suite written for Arduino that basically is a bunch of nifty examples that would work for the clue. And I will be porting those to CircuitPython. So for example, um, I was told like, you know, a thing where you can set the clue on the floor and press a button and that'll be like a base altitude and then you can lift it up and use it to measure how high something is um, in a demo. And so there's a number of things like that that combine different sensors or combine different, um, you know, features of the, of the clue board and make it so you can do all kinds of fun stuff with it. Um, so we'll put together basically a sensor lab suite for CircuitPython. And that's where I'm at. Awesome. Thanks, Katni. All right, let's go to Melissa. Hello. Let's see here. Awesome. Okay. Uh, last week I finished up the HT16K33 LED backpack guide updates. And uh, I've been heads down working on a web serial plotter, which I showed on Show and Tell. Uh, this week, I'm going to continue working on that and then maybe start a new guy if the plotter gets to a good pausing point. Nice. Awesome. Thanks, Melissa. Okay. Mm -hmm. uh, last up, we have Summersoft, who wasn't able to make the meeting, but I will read notes off. Uh, Summersoft says, uh, last week on Rosie Pie, configuration is now back to a complete working state, allowing dev progress. Uh, for Adabot daily report slash meeting notes, uh, change the count of supported boards to mirrored circuitpython.org. Uh, list merged uh, library PRs and the amount of time they were open and collapsed the open PR list. And this week uh, on Adabot, add the community bundle info to the library report and to circuitpython.org slash contributing. Awesome. All right, that's it for Summersoft. I will also note for myself that I... Um, just a thank you to everybody who did CircuitPython 2020. Uh, I have a draft of a uh, CircuitPython 2020 uh, recap post. And it basically says uh, it links to all of the CircuitPython 2020 posts. And it, it brings in Katni's idea that um, we should do it all year. So if you ever come up with, like, you have an experience that changes the way that you think think of CircuitPython, uh, write a blog post just like CircuitPython 2020, send it to that email, and we'll get it, and we'll post it online. Uh, we can do it all year, uh, which will be super cool. And I think that, you know, for myself, my my uh, visits to conferences and seeing how people interact with CircuitPython can really inform that. So um, if you have those experiences, like David, glad just you went to FOSTEM, uh, if that changed your perspective on what you think CircuitPython in 2020 should be and beyond, 
uh, go ahead and post it up and we'll share it out. Uh, we'd love to do that. And uh, if you didn't go back and read all of them, uh, check the Adafruit blog later today probably for that post and uh, you can go back and read them all. So thanks again, everybody. And uh, that is status updates. Uh, let's go into the weeds. Uh, into the weeds is our section where we just talk about anything that has come up that might be either a long discussion or just a question that folks have. Um, so as folks have done, if you have questions, uh, uh, drop a note in the notes doc under the in the weeds section and we'll kind of call on you and you can introduce the topic that you want to talk about. Uh, first up, let's talk uh, from Dishipu. Let's hear from Dishipu. Okay. Basically, what I would like to talk about is how to make uh, games on the uh, written in Circuit Python a bit more popular thing, mm -hmm. both for people who make the games and for people who want to play them. Because uh, we have quite a few devices that are suitable for, for various kinds of games. Mm -hmm. Uh, but uh, it's it's very difficult to find the games themselves to to uh, figure out what can run on your device and uh, to figure out how to even start doing that. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I there is one tutorial about the bouncing balls, uh, which gives you so very very basic starting point. But uh, that's basically it as far as we. Uh, mm -hmm. as far as games go. Mm -hmm. So uh, one, one idea that maybe could work is to add, uh, to create a new channel here mm -hmm. on Discord. Yeah. To, so, so that uh, people who are interested can, can join it yep. and uh, discuss. Uh, it's always a little bit easier to discuss uh, mm -hmm. things on topic uh, if there is a special channel for it. Right. I, I don't know. Maybe something else. Yeah, I think um, I can think of a few things. I, I think uh, Discord channel is great. Just let me know what name you want and I'll make it. Um, I think a guide is a good thing, like how to game with CircuitPython and then like keeping that guide up to date with the link to all the games would be good too. And then the last place I can think of is the awesome list. So uh, having a list on the awesome list of all the games that you know of as well would be would be good. Um, Okay, let's. I, I I will let you know about the uh, channel then. Cool. And uh, we can work on other things. Yeah, happy happy to happy to make that. That's a great idea. I think what we're finding is that the Circuit Python channel is pretty busy, and so if as we have these ideas of like specific topics, like let's break those out. Uh, that that sounds perfect. What about besides the awesome list? It could be even be a menu item on CircuitPython.org. At some point, if it's yeah, I don't know. I think um, you can't have too many menu items, but yeah, and we mirror yeah, well, we mirror the awesome we list have, there too. That's a good if point. If we have more yeah. games, that may make sense right now. Yeah. Yeah. a bunch, right? Yeah, and maybe like maybe itch.io or something like having a category there would be. Yeah, perfect. I was actually thinking about publishing those games on itch.io. Mm -hmm. Because uh, there is a, another thing that uh, uh, would un encourage actual professional game developers, like indie game developers, right. to to come to this platform. They could sell their games, right? Right, right. So uh, for for small small amounts, uh, but then we, we would get actual uh, game developers, uh, mm -hmm. you know, making awesome stuff. Right, right. Yeah, I think that's a good option too. If folks haven't seen it, it's itch.io. Uh, very common in, in very indie games, I think. It's like the indie game version of Steam. <laughs> yeah, game jams, yeah, it takes a lot of effort. Like community outreach and contests and stuff are, it's a whole world. <laughs> okay. Thanks to Shipu, and I look forward to hearing from you about that. Uh, let's go on to Dan. Okay, I just wanted to, um, this may not be a big a deal, but I pasted a link for the um, 
the issues that remain for uh, in five O issues that remain mm -hmm. before um, a release, and some of these may or may not be showstoppers. Right. So um, the the Mac crashing <laughs> that's terrible. <laughs> I mean, it's not our fault. But yeah. Uh, I thought I had fixed it, but for some reason it doesn't work on NRF. Okay. Um, there's the hard fault, ha fault handler gets triggered. That seems to have to do with NeoPixel write. And so I, I, that probably needs to be investigated. Mm -hmm. um, Jeff, do you have something to say about the SD card and display I.O.? Do you consider that kind of a showstopper? And is there a workaround? Do we need, still need a workaround for that? So um, in my own code... I found the workaround, but it requires that, uh, you know, you basically be careful when you're doing foreground file system requests, if you're doing anything that could be a background file system request. And there was a pull request that we had closed that I'm supposed to rework and make uh, the background tasks, uh, only certain background tasks skip when a foreground file system access is going. So I could dust that off and get it into 5.0, or we can say this is kind of a here be dragons you're using SD and mm -hmm. you're using it in the foreground and you're using it in the background. Sorry, it just doesn't work yet. Right. Um, and so the workaround is turn off your auto display refresh and you just can't play sound from the SD while you're otherwise using the SD. So mm -hmm. either way I'm content, but I can dust off that PR if that's what people want. I'm, an opinion? I'm okay with here be dragons. <laughs> okay. So we could put it in the, in the warnings, in the release notes. Um, Okay. Um, the in overflow thing, I think that probably could move, be moved to 5XX because it's not a showstopper. Um, NRF I2C hang is a kind of a pathological case that's going to happen less often now because we look for active pull-ups when we create an I2C object. So this will happen now only if you power down the I2C hmm. peripheral. So it, it requires adding a timeout into the NRFX library, probably. Hmm. Um, okay, so I, I'll think about that a little bit more. Um, the bus IO SPI stuff, uh, I'll think about that when I'm working on SPIM 3 on the 32 megahertz SPIM thing. Thea is talking about working on the MIDI read buffer stuff, but if it shows up, it'll show up. Otherwise, I don't think it's a showstopper. Yeah, the static analysis thing is not is only a latent bug. Yeah, and that's not STM important. 30, yeah, and the STM32 is not uh, a showstopper either. I think so. We could probably prune this list down considerably. So yeah, I think it's important to think that like the things that should prevent 5.0 are really like nasty bugs. Uh, yeah, for feature requests like like the. The microcontroller delay in getting the temperature, like we can easily put that in a five one, right? Like, yeah, like feature adding adding more stuff we can still do as it's stable. Right. So maybe I'll create a five x feature milestone if we don't have one already. So a five one, yeah. A five one, yeah. yeah. Um, and then, so I, I think just I think the the second one about the NeoPixel write stuff probably needs to be investigated. But mm -hmm. um, other than that, because that that that's a bit of a problem. Um, it would be nice to have a solution for the third one, but uh, for the S display I.O. and SD card, but I'm not sure that's a simple, it has to be kind of thought through. So, okay, good. This is very helpful. Thank you. Okay. Yeah, I think we do want an issue for spin three as well. I don't think we actually have one. Yeah, there isn't a spin three issue, right? Yeah. That would be good to just get on that list. Yeah. Okay. Cool. All right. Thanks, Dan. Thanks for taking the lead on that. You're welcome. All right. Let's go to Jeff. Yeah. So I just wanted to ask about this um, Circuit Python issue. It's to create a label class that is leaner on memory usage, uh, at least was why I was doing it. It turns out that this wasn't all about me. This was um, about a GitHub user by the name of, uh, I lost the name, uh, Gmeter had asked for this. Mm -hmm. uh, so, you know, kind of two different people were interested in it. 
Um, should we work toward making this a community lib? Should I suggest that they do it? Should I do it in my spare time? Or what's next? How does this issue get uh, closed? Uh, that's a good question. I, I was thinking that it would be an example on the bitmap font stuff. But I, then again, I, if it's using the built-in font, then that may not be the right place. Right, this kind of uh, way of using a font has to use the built-in font because then it's all in one bitmap and then one uh, tile grid can use it. Right. Um, I mean, we could add something to bitmap font so it creates one bitmap. It's just not there now. Um, it could go like the library for label is called display text so you could just have it as a sibling pi file there okay so i could i could pull request it or suggest to pull request it into the existing library that would work for me yeah just do it as a separate module so that you only pull the code mm -hmm. in for what you care about and then the difference is is like the existing label is full placement like really like good placement stuff whereas this is like a much smaller but leaner version that forces right. you into mono mono space right to use when you're resource constrained for whatever reason right like that's the trade-off right is that you just don't get mm -hmm. quite as fancy stuff yeah but i think it's fine to put it under display text i think that's okay okay i will suggest that see whether g meter wants to do it and if not circle back someday and try and get it done yep thank you yeah, thanks, Jeff. And yes, Carter, that's the that's the issue. All right, lastly, um, do you want to, David, do you want to just take a couple minutes to talk about FOSTEM? Um, yeah. So, well, I don't know if you've got a question. Um, I can explain a bit what went wrong. Uh, when I plugged the HDMI cable from the Beamer, my PC froze. The mouse, the keyboard, hmm. move anymore. Um, I did try to reboot, but um, so the, the way they've organized that in that conference room, because it's every conference, that there was zero delay from one speaker to another. Hmm. And the only thing I could not test in advance was to plug my laptop. Mm -hmm. I've, I've been staying in the room like one hour, one hour and a half, testing all of my demo, testing if the Wi-Fi was okay. But then Okay, hopefully I had a USB key and my slide on it, and so I took the laptop of one of presenting it uh, while part of the room, and I, I was able to at least show the slide, but I lost five the demo. Anyway, I had too much content for that. <laughs> That's, that was totally crazy. Um, so what? Uh, um, then interesting uh, conversation there. Um, well, a lot of people, um, I, the, the people there are more likely people like you, which are compiling MicroPython mm -hmm. into their code inside. Uh, batch maker, uh, which wanted to uh, figure out if they could put circuit Python on it. Like there was, uh, there is a camp in Belgium mm -hmm. every two years, and they had, they have a badge already, but they use ESP32. Mm -hmm. So they were uh, saying, "Oh, well, how can I access the flash? Because uh, it's with the serial, it's it's not super user friendly. And maybe it's too late." <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, but they 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 yeah they understood that there was a value in not use that. Right. Um. Maybe in my presentation I was unclear about how can you submit your own board to be a circuit Python board and have automatic compile every time there is a piece. So one guy was a bit worried. And I said, no, no, you can compile it yourself if you want. Uh, it's just that if you want to use the infrastructure, you have to describe your board and which EPI you what mm -hmm. so that. Uh, I've never done it, but I've seen other people do it, so they understand that part. Um, yeah, and then I went to the 
micropython stand um, and also there are questions say oh but what about that other food stuff and say okay it was just after my talk mm -hmm. so I, I kind of discussed the topic um, so there, there is a lady there which might be the distributor for UK or something like that she's there since two or three years uh, selling the stuff mm -hmm. and she well I, I went there before my talk just to double check what I knew about the contact. Uh, I think every two weeks there is contact with other George, uh, Damien George. And okay, but the, the feeling uh, I had before going there was say, okay, other food is a company with with values. I mean, I can see that with the gender stuff, the inclusivity, the way they, 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 they talk about um, open hardware, open software, uh, maybe the DMCA or, mm -hmm. uh, and, 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 okay, and, and my feeling, I, I, have that, I have that sadness that there is that fork in between the two. Right. And I say, okay, that fork is, uh, I mean, it's not a pleasure to do it. And, and I'm trying to figure out how to, to benefit uh, from it so that because the benefit is that um, we have more microprocessor which are supported mm -hmm. there are all of those libraries mm -hmm. um, and then okay I, I've seen people which are um, backporting circuit Python libraries into MicroPython uh, I see oh when there is a new microprocessor available uh, there is communication so um, yeah, I mean, for the community and for the, the benefits of all, um, there is something to, I mean, keep watching that and make sure it's not completely diverging. Right. From a user point, point of view, because I'm not one of those people which will compile themselves the stuff, I'm super happy with the simplicity mm -hmm. of circuit Python. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, Good. Uh, um, okay, and uh, a lot of, of uh, I've, I've seen the Tinigo stuff. That was a crazy demo, and is using a lot of other food hardware, mm -hmm. and they compile not on the board externally, and then they push that on the board, mm -hmm. and they do crazy stuff. <laughs> um, so yeah, um, a lot of other food hardware, and over there too, people wearing badge. Not a lot of badge, but the badge wear mm -hmm. frequently. <laughs> awesome. Well, thank you for like taking all the time to understand CircuitPython and MicroPython and presenting that to folks over there. Really appreciate it. I, I, I might take a break though a little bit because oh yeah, please uh, do. Part of I mean part 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 of coming to those meeting, uh, submitting PR and stuff like that was to uh, experience the stuff. I right. Mean, because it's it's easy to say that there is a community, but uh, I mean, uh, yeah, I need to, uh, by the way, I never tested the forum. Uh, I've discovered mm. recently that there were forums. So see, mm -hmm. you, you, uh, I mean, even with the time I spent um, on it, I've still stuff that I did not really yeah. experience, discover, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, well, uh, I, I always hope that everybody in this community takes breaks as needed. It's, we're in it for the marathon, not the sprint. So take care of yourself and, and make sure that you're, you're happy and healthy. That's the most important thing for us. Oh, and thank you for well, Jeff Gore that said, I think in the X report. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. Well, thanks, David. OK, I think uh, TG Techie has something quick. So let's go to them. Hi. So I was sitting down planning out the watch a while ago. And I realized that. Um, Display out does some really cool things, especially since it can support, in theory, any display. And not only that, it just supports displays in more interfaces, like hardware protocol, than is supported by just the circuit Python implementation, like at a Python level. So I was putting some thought in and I realized why not expose, besides, you know, keeping. I'll finish my prior thing. Why not expose the blip message used for displays and display yo 
as like an underscore split or something like that on display object. Um, if that's how they're created behind the scenes, I'm not sure. Because then it's cutting out part of the middle, or it could cut out part of the middle person in other libraries. Uh, not only in GFX, but in actual implementations of like SC77XX libraries or the other ones as well. Because it's, I would presume, faster to have that run in C than it'd be going through Python to get the data down. Um, My microphone was on, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm listening to you. Okay. <laughs> um, I think, <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think the challenge is, is that Display.io is trying to do, you know, like tracking for you so that when things change in the structure of Display.io, it sends just the minimal bits across. Um, mm -hmm. If we were to expose a way for you to just say, draw these bits in this rectangle, like that would be the only thing you'd be able to use for correctness, right? Like you would have to manage mm -hmm. all of it then. You would not be able to... Um, yeah, you'd not be able to do anything else. Like, I, I should have specified, I wasn't picturing using it in addition to the sprite structure in that. It would be, you make one of the display objects, right, like the four wire, or, and it, that's used somewhere else by some other piece of code. Uh... I don't know how it functions under the hood. That could be a, a big ask. Well, I mean, there's... I, I'm, I'm actually just pulling it up. I think that there is a way to just send something to the display mm -hmm. um, that just circumvents it all. Uh, I think it's just on the... Yeah, like the display bus itself has a send command. Okay. So for like four wire, like if you're doing a spy display, you can just call send with a command and data and it will do it. In C? It'll do it in C, yeah. Like I mean it's basically okay. spy under the hood, but it'll work for the parallel ones as well. Um okay. uh, But I really don't next. think that's what you want. I think display IO <laughs> is what you want. It's just it's complicated and, and I haven't I haven't explained it well. So knowing what you want is where I would start. Um, and okay. then maybe I can help you do that with display IO as well. Okay. I will write up what I want after thinking about it. Cool. May I ask yeah. what page or source file that was in? Uh, what is what? The thing I just linked to? Yeah. Oh, did you put a link up? I did. Oh, thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Yeah, it's just on four wire, and I think that all of the other ones have it as well. Seagrover asks, uh, "Would it also be handy if Display IO could capture a screen as a bitmap for SD card capture or reuse as a background? Is there a way to do that?" Ooh. And the answer is yes, there is a way to do that. It is on display. There's a guide for it, and it's fill row. So you can get one row of pixels at a time um, so that you can write it out. I'd really like to, when we have a high-speed USB, I'd like to actually like mirror the display up the USB link, too, so you could just do like webcam video capture on your side on a computer. Oh, that'd be so cool. I know. I know. I really, every time I see a demo of like a camera pointed to a screen, I'm just like my like yeah. there's a spike in my head that just gets driven into it a little bit deeper. <laughs> um, <laughs> so it it'll happen at some point, but the reality is is that BLE is like way helpful, and and getting that fleshed out would be really nice. Um, okay. Cool. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, TG Tacky. All right, and with that, let's wrap up. Uh, let me take a time code. We're right at the hour 29 mark. So um, thank you. This has been the uh, the CircuitPython, <laughs> CircuitPython community meeting for February 3rd, 2020. Uh, if you're finding this after the fact, it usually happens on Mondays at 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern on the Adafruit Discord server, which is adafru.it slash discord. That'll drop you in there. 
Uh, this video has been recorded. It is available on uh, YouTube and it will be on Diozone as well. Um, we'll have links from that video uh, to the notes doc. And we also put links in the notes doc back to the videos. Uh, so if you, we have a GitHub repository of all the notes, you can follow along and start there. Um, next week we're at our normal time, but I did want to give a heads up for those of you outside the U.S. Uh, we do, the U.S. has a holiday in two weeks uh, from today. Uh, we call it President's Day. Uh, so we will probably bump the meeting, not next week, but the week after. So just uh, keep your eyes peeled for that info. Uh, we haven't gotten the calendar up yet. It's on my to-do list. Uh, but I do want to give a further heads up than we did for MLK Day uh, last month. So, uh, yeah, if you want to get notified about um, goings-ons uh, around the meeting, we're happy to add anybody to the CircuitPythonistas role on Discord, which is the one that we will mention in our updates about here's the, here's the doc for the next week. Uh, we do that typically a week beforehand now is a way to get uh, heads up out early as well. Um, so yeah, drop it in our Discord, say hi to us, uh, let us know that you're a listener, and uh, get on the Circuit Python nieces list. Everyone's welcome to participate. Really appreciate everybody who's participated today, and uh, we'll see you all next week. Bye, everybody. Thanks, everyone. <laughs>